What's going on everybody, the Network here, hope you're doing well. So in this video, we'll be doing something a little bit differently. We'll be looking at um, InfoSec tools, specifically Kali Linux. And we will even be looking at performing a little bit of penetration testing and maybe, I dare say, exploitation. But I do so with a disclaimer that this is all just for educational purposes. And this is just to help you identify these types of issues, perhaps in your own network, so that you can go about resolving these issues yourself. So let's get into the video. All right, before we do anything on Kali Linux, I just want to explain a little bit what it is. It is a Linux distribution, like an operating system that you can install either on a virtual machine or on a physical hardware, depending on what your requirements is. I will personally be installing this on EVNG because it's nice for me to have it on nested virtualization so that I can put Kali Linux in a topology and even add routers onto a topology in EVNG to test some vulnerabilities and just see how everything works. Now, Kali Linux is more of a awesome framework because it comes with all of the neat packages that you might need for penetration testing to identify how all of these issues work or these exploits work that malicious users might use against you. And it also just gives you a library of where to go to so that you can see stuff like CVEs and whatnot so that it's very easy for you to identify and play around with info security. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, to get Kali Linux on Eve, it's actually relatively straightforward. You can just go to eve-ng.net uh, uh, eve eve and on their web page, you can just navigate to the download section. Or actually, we can go to documentation. We can look at a how-to. And then with the how-tos, there's actually the Linux uh, that we will be looking at. Now, what's nice is the Linux images, there's very little that you actually need to do to get everything up and running. Eve has already set up a share that you can just download a distribution for Kali Linux, and it's the 2019.3 version. And you here you can see what the login credentials are. It's root and tour as the password, username and password. And yeah, you'll, you'll just go to this uh, mega share directory download the Kali Linux image, uh, follow these in installation instructions, but it's very straightforward. You'll just create a folder on Eve, uh, unzip the uh, tar file in Eve or on the VM. You can remove the old file and fix permissions. And there you go, you're ready to go. You can now become a professional pen tester. But um, I'm just going to open up my Eve NG topology now, and then we're going to log into Kali Linux so I can show you a bit how it looks. And it's really, really awesome tool. So here I've got a topology open, but let's just create a new topology. I'll add a new lab, call it Kali test. Going to save this. And now with the Kali test, I'm just going to import a node, go to Linux, find Kali and import that. So I'll leave this on the basics, even though they recommend eight gig, you can up it later on, it doesn't really affect the performance in the beginning. So there we go, we've got a Kali Linux node. Let's just start it up so I can actually show you what's going on on this VM. Now, once I get into Kali Linux, it'll just start up and as you can see Kali by offensive security, it's uh, something a lot of people are interested in these days or InfoSec. Um, cloud and obviously your typical networking and SD-WAN and that stuff. But it's very nice to see the InfoSec side as well so that you can understand, especially if you manage infrastructure and you're not quite sure why these um, exploits are so bad. It's, it's nice to have a playground like this to actually showcase it for you so you can experience firsthand what's happening. I'm going to log in with root and tour. And let me just put this in its own little window as well so that I can go full screen mode. All right. So here's Kali Linux and this is awesome. It just looks like a normal Linux distribution with a desktop version. Uh, you can run this via the terminal exclusively if you want to. If you know Ubuntu, very similar type of uh, <laughs> panels and such. 
But what is awesome to me is with Kali Linux, if you go to your applications, there's actually already a bunch of different tools here set up for you that you can use to perform these types of um, checks. Let's call it that. Now, again, I definitely recommend that you use this in a lab environment just to see for yourself how the exploits work and how you can potentially stop them. But it, please don't, don't do anything malicious. It's never, never a good thing. All right, so now we've got a Kali Linux node. Let's actually add this node to a network or let's add a router and then we can add a node as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a MicroTik router, which I know which uh, version has a bit of an exploit with the SMB. And I'm going to use Kali Linux to exploit that in a moment. But let's just have that MicroTik there or MicroTik. Let's add the management cloud. And then I just want to connect my cloud to the Kali Linux and I'll connect to the MicroTik device as well. Let me start up my MicroTik and then let's see what's happening. But with this SMB exploit that I want to show you, it goes without saying that um, if SMB is disabled, which it typically is by default, then this type of exploitation isn't going to be as bad for you. However, if you have it enabled and you haven't set stuff like firewall rules and uh, interfaces that can use the SMB, then you might be in for a bad time because exploiters can use this. And this is one of the big exploits that they picked up in 2018. And it's part of the exploits that they picked up that 300,000 MicroTicks haven't been patched for. Like these type of exploits are still active because people just don't update their firmware. And I highly suggest you update your firmware because that is the best and quickest way to address issues like this. All right, all that I want to do is just check, do I have an IP address? I do. So we're going to use that IP address in a moment with the Kali Linux. And I just want to enable the SMB quickly. So IP SMB set enabled. Yes, that's all I'm going to do. And now from Kali, we can do a few things. First, let's perform a bit of a reconnaissance. So we can use a tool called Nmap just to see which ports are open. So Nmap minus V, let's just type in the IP address. I think it was 149.148. Let's hit enter. And their Nmap tells us exactly which ports are open on that IP address to be scanned. And malicious people are all the time scanning for open ports and seeing which ports are open so that they can potentially perform some type of exploit. And here I can already see Winbox port is open. So if there's some exploit with Winbox, I can definitely use it on that port. And here I can also see that the SMB ports are open. So 139 and 445. So I definitely know I could perform this type of attack with these ports being open. Now, how are we going to perform the attack? Well, I want to show you something on Kali Linux on this distribution, which is nice with this uh, browser plugin installed. If I open up my browser, and let's just full screen this again. It looks a little bit nicer in the full screen mode. Then we can now see there's actually a bunch of bookmarks that we can go to. But exploit-db is potentially one of the big places that you're going to find exploits that are occurring. And your good friend Google as well. So if we go to google.com, there's like a Mitre site as well, M-I-T-R-E. They also just show a bunch of exploits, but let's type in MicroTik CVE. Now CVE details is also actually a pretty good site to be honest. So I'll open that up as well. And with the CVE details, we can actually see how many types of vulnerabilities there's been. And if I look at the other one on cve.mitria.org, we can see there's a ton of different vulnerabilities that have been picked up over the years. It's actually quite uh, easy to read because you did your CVE, then you get the year, and then there's just the item that um, they decided that it's going to be. Now the exploit that I want to use is in a 2018 version and it is regarding the SMB. So let's just quickly find it. This one, a buffer overflow was found in the MicroTik router OS SMB service when processing NetBIOS. And this is pretty dangerous as well because people can get some pretty scary access on your router. They can see stuff that you're typing from the memory. Um, and this is again, why you just want to make sure you are always 
updating to the latest versions. Now if I go here, we get a bunch of nice URLs to actually show us exactly. So there we can see the exploit-db.com exactly for that exploit. And this will give us a bunch of details. But the nice thing about here is we can actually get some code that we can run on our own now to actually test to see if the exploit works and we can potentially use it ourselves. So I'm just going to download this, even though I've downloaded it before. So 44290.py, which is a Python file. And it's busy downloading. And this is really just the code that's in there. Now that I've downloaded this file, I can actually run the Python script. So I'm just going to go to my terminal again. And since we know SMB is open, it's actually pretty straightforward. So first I need to find that Python file. So I'm just going to change directory to my downloads. Downloads. And then we can see the 44290.py. So all I'm going to do is type in Python. And this is a 2.7 script that I'm, or Python 2.7 I'm going to use. And I'm going to type that script. And if I hit enter, it's going to ask me for the IP. So let's just put the IP of that router. 192.168.149.148. Hit enter. And this is scary stuff because we are technically in here. So now I can type something like uname minus a. Tells me exactly what this is, what's happening here. And from here, we've actually got some scary backdoor access. We can do a bunch of stuff on a, not even the microtech level. You can think of this as almost being the kernel level um, of this uh, Linux device and scary stuff. So again, Remediation for this would be to either turn off SMB or just update your MicroTik to the latest version because it will not be a part of any type of exploitation. Now, I'm just giving you a very brief and quick overview of what Kali Linux is and how we can potentially use this to help us in our networks. And I highly suggest if you enjoy this type of content, there are various content uh, creators that already delve in info security, especially people like David Bombal, um, give their channels a watch. And if people are up for it, I can definitely play around here some more as well, give you some more Kali Linux specific things. But I love networking and firewalling. So this is also, let's say, a bit of a new world for me, even though I've used a lot of these tools before. Um, I'm not typically the person that's just um, trying to figure out how to exploit devices. I'm, I'm the guy to, that just sets up the networks and makes sure everything keeps running and making sure the stuff gets patched. Okay, so this is going to be where I end off the video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next video and I hope you enjoyed. See ya.